Stay my blade from the flesh of the innocent. Hide in plain sight. Never compromise the Assassin Brotherhood. These are the tenets of the Creed. The principles I used to live by. I was a young man then. The Seven Years' War was about to begin. I could not have imagined what the future had in store for me. Nor the cost I would choose to bear. My name is Shay Patrick Cormac. This is my story. Nothing is true, everything is permitted. May the Father of Understanding guide us. These models are the culmination of two factions who have fought across centuries for peace, but who have also become divided in the ways of how to achieve that peace. One group has chosen to let people have freedom of choice, while the other seeks to take away their freedom since freedom is an invitation to chaos. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am talking about the Assassin Templar War. Assassin's Creed has always shown us that the Assassins are the good guys and that the Templars are the bad guys, but in the real world, things are not always that black and white. In fact, in most cases, the world is full of shades of gray. With that in mind, the same could be said about the Assassin's Templar War that has been going on for centuries in the Assassin's Creed games. For the majority of the Assassin's Creed games, Templars were seen as evil villains scheming to take over the world, but what if I told you that not all the Templars were completely evil, or that not all the Assassins were completely good? What if I told you that this concept has been a part of the Assassin's Creed lore since the very beginning with the first Assassin's Creed game? In Assassin's Creed, we played as Altair, an arrogant, cocky assassin who broke the three tenets of the Creed. Stay your blade from the flesh of the innocent, hide in plain sight, and never compromise the Brotherhood. Altair would go on the quest of redeeming himself and restoring his status as the Master Assassin by killing nine Templars under the orders of the mentor of the Assassin Brotherhood, Al-Mualim. But by the end of his quest, when Altair kills Robert de Sable, the Grand Master of the Templar Order, it is revealed that the real enemy is none other than Al-Mualim and that de Sable was actually protecting Altair from him. This revelation is very important because it shows that even the Assassins are corruptible and are not the benevolent freedom fighters they claim to be. You might say, well, the Templars are worse, look at what the Borges did, and yes, they are pure evil. But you can also look at Templars like Haytham, Madeline, and Shay. Yes, they did bad things, but they also did noble things like free Native Americans, rescue slaves, and stop the assassins from destroying the world. The Templar Pledge sets the ground for which the Templars stand. Do you swear to uphold the principles for which we stand, never to share our secrets nor divulge in the true nature of our work, and do so unto death, whatever the cost? Templars might not be so different from the assassins, so the fight for peace has never been more clouded with which side is right. Should we achieve peace through freedom or control? This is what Ubisoft explores in Assassin's Creed Rogue. Ubisoft cleverly decided to release this underappreciated gem alongside their exclusive next-gen title, Assassin's Creed Unity, which in my opinion was a bad marketing move for them since Rogue was left behind in Unity's shadow, despite it setting a clear connection to Unity, but Assassin's Creed Rogue does a great job of filling in the gap that is left between the end of Black Flag, the events preceding Assassin's Creed 3, and the tragic beginnings of Unity. Assassin's Creed Rogue takes us into the life of one Shea Patrick Cormac, who conveniently starts off as an assassin who is pretty cocky, sure of himself and thinks he's better than his fellow assassin and best friend Liam. Shay was pretty happy to be an assassin at that point of his life, but his world would be turned upside down during the Seven Years' War. The beginning of Shay's fall would start when Shay and Liam returned to the Davenport homestead with Shay's new ship, the Morrigan, to witness the arrival of Adewali, who had already established himself as a legend amongst the assassins for his background as a former slave, pirate, and assassin. There, Shay would sneak and listen into the conversation between Adewali and Achilles about a disaster that happened in Haiti. Not understanding what he has heard, Shay would go back to training with fellow assassins Hope, Kasego Wasi, and Liam. Shay would then be called by Achilles and tasked with retrieving a precursor box and manuscript that was stolen by the Templars from the assassins. Shay agreed to take on the task and would go and meet up with fellow assassin Chevalier de la Vendre and his associate Le Chasseur to get into on where the artifacts might be and which Templars had them. Shay was then informed that a package was being brought to Lord Washington, who was the older brother of George Washington. There, Shay witnessed Washington meeting with a group of other Templars. After learning that the other two Templars were left in charge of the manuscript and precursor box, Shay proceeded to blend in into the party and assassinate Lawrence Washington. When Shay successfully assassinated Washington, he would learn that he was already dying from tuberculosis, which caused him to feel guilty. This would be the start of a long chain of events that would cement Shay's doubt in the Brotherhood. Shay would spend the next few months trying to find the Templars that 
Washington had met with and successfully found one of them who had the precursor box in their possession, which Shay took quickly from him after assassinating him. Shay then headed towards New York to look for the other Templar who had the manuscript. Along the way, Shay witnessed a meeting between William Johnson and Benjamin Franklin, who were researching a way of opening the precursor box. From there, Shay learned that the other Templar was in possession of the manuscript and proceeded to kill him. I'll take that, you Templar dog. No! You have no idea what you're doing, fool! Keeping the people free from your control. How free will you be when the French undermine these squabbling colonies? These colonies would be far better off without the Templars pulling the strings. <laughs> we bring order from chaos. If everything is permitted, no one is safe. Even the devil can quote scripture to suit his own purposes. Despite the Templar warning Shay of how dangerous the assassins truly are, Shay dismisses it. Now that Shay had both artifacts, he would meet up with fellow assassin Hope, and both of them would convince Benjamin Franklin in helping them open the precursor box with his famous lightning experiment. There, Shay and Hope would learn that there was an artifact in Lips in Portugal. Shay and Hope would go to inform Achilles about the artifact's location. After getting Achilles' approval, Shay would head to Lipson to look for and retrieve the artifact before the Templars could get their hands on it. Shay would find and open a secret temple underneath the cathedral that stored the artifact. Unfortunately, when Shay took the artifact, it quickly dissolved and triggered a huge earthquake throughout the whole city. With no time to think, Shay moved quickly through the chaos of the city, collapsing with buildings falling all around him. Fortunately, Shay was able to escape and make it back to the ship, but now he had all that innocent blood in his hands. It was now time to head back home and seek some answers. So what's the next city you want me to smite? What happened in Haiti happened in Portugal. A great earthquake? Thousands dead thanks to your damned manuscript! This cannot be. Shay, a person cannot start an earthquake! A person meddling with these precursor machines could! You saw the box, Hope. The temple was filled to bursting with that kind of power! You made me slaughter innocents! How dare you! You defend him? Achilles sent me in there like Makandal sent his man in Haiti! What he the hell is going on? Stop this! The operation was delicate. Perhaps you. You are shifting the earth itself! Who are you to decide what city falls next? Get him out of here. After Shay and Achilles' heated debate, Shay decided that no one would be safe if the assassins kept going after the artifacts, so he decided to steal the manuscript from Achilles' office, but was caught red-handed. Shay would attempt to make a daring escape, but eventually was cornered by the Brotherhood alongside a cliff. That's enough! Give back the manuscript, Shay! I'm sure Achilles- I cannot! I will not let this happen again! All those souls lost. One more hardly matters. Shay! Shay would then wake up weeks later in the home of Barry and Cassidy Finnegan in New York. There, Shay would protect the Finnegans from some thugs who broke into their home and they would gift him their son's clothes since he recently passed away. Later on, Shay would meet Colonel Monroe who was a friend of the Finnegans. Monroe would task Shay with saving his friend Christopher Giss who was scheduled to be executed by some of the local gangs. Shay saved Giss from the gang and found his ship, the Morgan, close by and took it back. Shay would help Monroe in dealing with some French forces in the area and found Le Chasseur and proceeded to kill him. There, Shay would learn that the assassins were procuring chemicals to use on the British authorities and quickly went and destroyed their operation since it would put innocent people in danger. Much later, Shay would rescue Monroe from French forces and there he would see Kasegawasi and leave him scarred. Shay now knows that the assassins will be informed that he is alive and they will proceed to hunt him down. Much later, Shay helps the British and Colonel Monroe in defending a town from the French and their Native American allies. Shay would find Kasegawasi again and proceeded to kill him. Learning that the assassins were after Monroe since he was in possession of the manuscript, Shay left immediately to save him. Regrettably, he was too late and with his last dying breaths, Monroe gives Shay his Templar ring, revealing himself to be a Templar. Shay would proceed to honor Monroe and gets inducted into the Templar Order. There it would be shown that all the allies he has met so far after being left for dead by the assassins were Templars. Do you swear to uphold the principles of our order and all that for which we stand? I do. And never to share our secrets or divulge the true nature of our work? I do. And to do so from now until death, whatever the cost? I do. 
Then we welcome you into our fold, brother. You are now a Templar, harbinger of a new world. May the Father of Understanding guide us. May the, May the Father, Father of, of Understanding, understanding guide us. Shay would accompany Haytham to fight French forces, and there they would find Adewali. Shay would re feel regret in killing Adewali, but now he knew he must eliminate all of the colonial brotherhood if the world is to remain safe. Shay would proceed to hunt all the allies the assassins had in the colonies. Eventually, he would find hope and found that she had replicated Benjamin Franklin's experiment on the precursor box. She would give the location to Liam, who would be leaving to give the information to Chevalier. Hope would poison Shay, and he would proceed to kill her for the antidote, but regretted having to kill her. You're late. Again, Shay. Hope. I didn't want to do this. I trained you to do this. I expected nothing less. Then why? To give Liam time to leave. Soon Chevalier will be on his way to the Precursor site. I will stop him. He will see you coming. Pity. So much potential. Now Shay would go on to hunt Chevalier in the North Atlantic, but Chevalier ambushed Shay first, catching him off guard. Shay was able to destroy the ambushers and kill Chevalier. There Shay would learn that he was nothing more of a decoy and that Achilles and Liam had already headed north to find the precursor site. Now that most of the Brotherhood had been destroyed, Shay knew that they were in the endgame and had to stop them from disturbing the first civilization artifact. Haytham would accompany Shay on this mission and they would head north to finally catch up with them. Is this the apple? No, don't touch anything. Shay was right. What would he know? More than me, apparently. Finally, you understand. Achilles, this is a structure to hold the world together, not a weapon to control it. This whole calamity could have been avoided if you'd only listened to me. Disrespectful to the end. Yes, we've been working on that. Right or wrong, Shay. He betrayed the Brotherhood, Achilles, and me says the man who shot me in the back at the homestead that was chevalier i don't miss him don't <laughs> With another earthquake being triggered, Shay and Haytham split up with Shay going after Liam and Haytham going after Achilles. Shay had no choice but to fight and kill his best friend. I was lucky. How many times do I have to tell you, Liam? I make my own luck. How did you do that? You bastard. You broke the assassins. Betrayed everyone you knew. You sided with our worst enemies. And for what? <laughs> to save the world. I hope that world is a good one. After taking the manuscript, Shay would catch up to Haytham and stop him from killing Achilles. No! Why not? Achilles is harmless now. A mentor with no followers. What kind of world are we making if we cannot show mercy? Besides, he understands what these precursor sites are now. Without him, the assassins may continue their search. Valid points. Ah! Never forget what has happened here. I won't. But the world will. After the battle, Haytham would task Shay with finding the precursor box, even if it would take him the rest of his life. Shay would be absent from the American Revolution, the rebirth of the colonial assassins, and the downfall of the American Templars thanks to Connor. Shay spent all those years hunting leads and traveling across the world in search of the precursor box, finally locating it in France. Shay would meet and rescue Benjamin Franklin from thugs in Versailles in order to gain assistance from him. Shay and Franklin would travel to the Palace of Versailles together once there. Shay left Franklin. Franklin to meet up with an associate. Shay would proceed to infiltrate the top floors of the palace and would kill Charles Dorian, the father of future assassin Arnold Dorian, and take the precursor box from him. You're the traitor. 
I'm just finishing old business. <sighs> oh, Connor and his assassins. The American Revolution undid your Templar business. Then perhaps we shall start a revolution of our own. Assassin's Creed Rogue showed us that the Assassins can be villains as well. We saw that the Assassins were responsible for weaponizing gangs throughout the colonies. They were not afraid of using chemical warfare on the authorities, which could have killed many innocents. And they were so ambitious in getting every piece of Eden that they could get their hands on, that they didn't care about the damage that they were causing. Many people had to die, but no matter how you look at it, you can see that the Colonial Brotherhood were villains, terrorists, and butchers. They killed many innocent people, and not everyone in the Colonial Rite of Templars was evil. Colonel Monroe was the epitome of what a Templar should be, he helped the citizens of the colonies, he cared for them, and he died defending them from the French and their assassin allies. The assassin Templar war is bloody with extremists on both sides of the conflict. Their war now reaches on to the modern age, but that doesn't mean that there aren't good people on both sides of the conflict. Does the good person deserve death if they choose to be on one side or another? The assassins and Templars have tried to put their differences aside and tried to work together multiple times throughout history, but ultimately it always fails due to their different ideologies, goals, and methods of achieving peace. There are times when the assassins are right, but there are also times when the Templars are right. Everyone likes to believe that they are the hero in their own story, never realizing that they might sometimes be the villain. If you guys enjoyed this video, consider becoming a subscriber and leaving a like on this video and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Uphold the principles of our order, and all that for which we stand. Never share our secrets, nor divulge the true nature of our work. Do so until death. Whatever the cost, this is my new creed. I am Shea Patrick Cormac, Templar of the Colonial, of the American right. I am an older man now, and perhaps wiser. A war and a revolution have ended, and another is about to begin. May the Father of Understanding guide us all.